Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle McGraw from Made by Michelle McGraw, and this is Floss Tube number 22. So, this is not going to be my normal floss tube. This is kind of a special edition, so to speak. I am not going to show any whip progress. It's only been like a week since I did a floss tube with my um, progress. And so, while I've stitched on four different projects, I don't have tons of progress to show. Um, I, I mean, I do. One of them is on the Q-snap, perfectly aligned, and I don't want to take it off to show the progress. It's almost done. So I just want to go ahead and finish that before I show it. Um, so this one is going to be some sewing project bags. Some, um, I'm going to show you my spring boards, and I'm going to show you some haul. So um, if you want to stick around, thank you. If you don't, I'll catch you on the next floss tube. Um, thank you so much to all of my subscribers, my new subscribers, my old subscribers, all of the likes and the shares. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who um, reaches out and I have made so many friends and connections. It's so awesome. So thank you for that. Um, I really enjoy it and I see floss tube as um, a nice relaxing escape. So with that said, I am not going to address any of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, I think you guys are all bombarded with that and I am, I have to turn the news off. Um, just a little bit of news a day and I'm done. So this is to bring joy and a distraction from everything. So I will just say thoughts and prayers are with everybody and stay safe. And we're gonna move on into showing you my change out for my spring boards. There we go. So, um, the first thing, um, I need to change out my spring boards, uh, my cross stitch boards. They still have winter on them. I have not changed them out. And it is going to be 80 degrees in Charlotte at the end of the week. No, I think high 70s. It was 80 last week. Um, it's chillier in the morning, like you need a cardigan in the morning and then you definitely need short sleeves in the afternoon. Um, <clears throat> So I have cleaned out my closet, switched out my closet. That was a big project for yesterday. Um, we are in a small house, long story. We bought the house when my oldest was two. It was supposed to be a temporary house. And since then I have bought commercial land in Charlotte, commercial land in Concord, um, a farm, which we have intentions to build on one day. Um, so the house just keeps, it, it gets moved. I mean, that's that's what it is when you own your own business. Um, your personal stuff always gets moved back for the sake of the business. So one day, but this house, the closets are, mine is a walk-in closet, but it is not very big. Um, so my husband actually doesn't even use that. Well, he uses two shelves in that closet um, and the rest of it's mine, but I don't have enough room for all of my clothes to stay in there year round. So I switched them out summer and winter and um, I always keep some short sleeves in my closet throughout the winter because you will need them in the South and I have used them. Um, and then I am keeping out right now one or two um, like half zip sweatshirts that I like to wear because that's something that if I am cold, I can throw that on, them on. I'm keeping out some cardigans and that will get me through the rest of the spring. So um, we have allergy season right now, which is why I'm kind of gunky and, you know, yucky. Everybody is, it's just what it is. You go outside and your car is green, it's nasty. Um, your eyes itch, it's, it just is what it is. You know, it's, it's the springtime, all the trees have popped, everything's green, flowers are blooming. So we are well on our way to summertime in the South. Not my favorite, um, it's hot. Um, so it's okay. Um, so I'm going to show you my, um, Easter cross stitch. And I also pulled some spring because Easter kind of got lost to me this year with not going out and stuff. Um, I may just put up spring ones and kind of skip the Easter ones this year. I don't know. We'll see. But I do have some Easter cross stitch to show. Um, 
So the first one, this is a set of four. There's a little duck. Here is a duck on an egg. And once again, if you've never seen my cross stitch boards, you can go on my Instagram. It is made by Michelle McGraw. Um, and I show pictures of my cross stitch boards when they're changed out. And they're set of four and I put them in um, frames, little frames that I can change out. I have three boards. Um, one my dad made me, that was my first board. And then one my husband made me, which is black, which goes more in my home decor. Um, and then another black one that is bigger so that I can make bigger projects on it. Um, you can still put small ones on it, but I like the ability to be able to put a bigger project on it too. So I have the three boards. I want to do another one with three on it. Um, some patterns only have three in the pattern, not four little mini ones. Um, like this one I'm going to show you now, it was only three, although this was spring one and spring two, and I just picked out my favorite from each pattern um, and mixed and matched them from those two. I don't remember the name of it. Um, it's an older pattern, and so a lot of a lot of the stuff that's on my cross stitch board is older, so I don't always know the name because I didn't pay attention, I just stitched them. Um, so this is spring one or spring two, a little bunny face. Um, yep, I just dropped them. A little silhouette of a bunny. Some tulips. For some reason, I love these tulips so much. I just think they're so simple and pretty. And a carrot. So very simple little Easter silhouettes. Um, this material is somewhat of a purple. It's very light purple. Um, that was super fun for me to stitch on. And it um, sparkles. I don't know if you can see that. It's picking it up a little bit. Um, so when we would stitch these, a lot of times we started off with white Ada and that's all that we had. So when we had other choices, we were always excited to stitch on them. My sister has a cross stitch board. I have a cross stitch board and my mom has a cross stitch board. Um, my sister has multiples. My mom just has, no, she has two. She has a mini one. I don't have a mini one where they're very, very small. My mom and my sister have those. Um, and then they also have like what I consider the medium board. Um, we all have that. And then me and my sister have the larger boards. My mom doesn't have the larger one. So this next one is some spring ones. And these are from Prairie Schooler. I do not remember the name of the pattern. But as you know, Prairie Schooler is still being released. So I'm sure you could find this. Cute little sheep. A little bunny. And I just thought these were cute spring ones, not overly Easter-y, um, but you could definitely put them up for Easter too. They're so sweet. And the last one is the little Robin in the house. I love those. So I think those are definitely gonna be put up. Um, they're one of my favorites. And I don't remember where my bags are. Oh, here it is. Okay, we're not answering that phone. I don't even know why we still have a house phone because nobody answers it. Okay, um, the next one is, oh my goodness, it's a sneak, it's called a sneak peek spring. And I don't remember the um, manufacturer, but I do know it's called sneak peek. And they have other little sneak peeks um, of different seasons. So here is a little cat peeking up at the flower. I think that's so cute. I think there's a bee on it. No, just a flower maybe. I don't know. Here's a watering can watering the flowers. Here's some little bees. Aren't they sweet? 
And then here's a garden gnome. He was my favorite peeking out. I liked him too. So they do have other ones. I know I have like the winter one. Um, there might be a summer one. I'm not sure. I know the winter one because it has skis on it. It's super cute. I haven't done it yet, but it's super cute. Okay. Um, here's some Prairie Schooler Easter ones as well. I did these on Black Ada. And the colors show up fantastic when you do them on a dark fabric. They're so cute. And just so sweet. So I like those two. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, I will show you, I think I have showed you guys these before, but I'm going to switch out. I have um, another frame that has really big ones in it, and I think you can put a six by six in there. I don't have near enough to put in there, um, so a lot of times it stays up there for a long time because I just don't, I, I haven't done a lot for them. I need to do more. Um, these are Wizard of Oz from Brooks Books, and there is the, um, Tin Man. I did have some issues. When I went to wash these, my green fabric bled into my, my colors. It wasn't the colors, it was the fabric. It was kind of my fault because I didn't pre-wash this fabric and it was hand-dyed and I didn't pay attention. I had done them and then went back and washed them and I forgot all about the fact that it was hand dyed fabric. And so it bled a little bit. I'm not very happy with that, but it is what it is. So this one was my favorite. I love the lion. He is just awesome. Loved him. He's what made me do the patterns. We have Dorothy, which this is the one you can tell the bleeding, and that actually looks pretty good. In person, this white is more muted, and so it bled into that white more than I'm happy with, anyhow. But she's super cute. Um, I still put them up because, I mean, like from a distance, that looks fine. It's when you get up close. And then we have the witch. So I will be putting those up um, and then I leave these up quite a while just for um, something different on there. Um, okay, I have a couple more I can show. And this is some spring that I like to put up just because it screams spring to me. So you have the vegetables. You have some bees and a honeycomb. I did this so long ago. There is an error in here. I think I backstitched every single block and I don't think I was supposed to. I think that was my error. And I was like, eh, done, I'm not doing it again. So like you learn, like I, I was little when I did that one. And then just a little spring vase. So I like to put those up. Um, there's a whole container of them that I have and that came out of this book and I did so many of them. Um, let me just pick out some of the spring ones and I'll save the other ones that I put up for um, the summertime. Here is a watering can. Some of these I just put up spring or summer. That actually says summer, so we're not gonna show that. Um, this little one, the little wind chimes, I just think that it just reminds me of spring. Like, cause you put your wind chimes out. 
Here's a little bunny. This one is one of my favorite. I love tulips and I just thought that was so pretty. And then we have the little one that says spring. And then we have the hummingbirds. So some of these go for, I keep them all together. You might see some of those come up again. They kind of mix match with my summer ones. They all came out of the same book. So you can kind of use whatever you need because they're out of the same book. Okay, this is another springtime one. And I believe this is Prairie Schooler as well. The sheep and her baby. bunny and the baby. And these could go up in the summertime. I just tend to put them up in the springtime. I think that's so sweet. And then the little pig and the piglet. Okay, so that's some spring cross stitch that I will switch out on my boards. You might see some of those in my summer ones. Um, like I said, I interchange them. Okay, the other thing I wanted to share is, um, I told you guys in my last floss tube, or in my two floss tubes ago, that we went to Vegas and we went to Stitcher's Paradise and I met Deb from Country Stitchers and we went over there, I went twice. Um, she sent me a lovely gift, so I wanted to share that. Um, she definitely did not need to do this, but it was very, very sweet. So she sent me some fabric. So I love that. And some Joblin, which I love Joblin. I like to stitch on Joblin. Some more Joblin. Isn't this a pretty color to do some Easter ones on? I think that would be so cute. I'm not sure which fabric this is. It doesn't say, but it's some nice blue. There you go. And then a pretty yellow. So pretty. She sent me some patterns. Um, she said that if I already had some of these to pass them on, some of these I do not have at all um, and I love them. So she sent me a sweet little card and thanked me for taking to going out there with her, um, which was my pleasure. Um, so I love this one, Waxing Moon Designs, Family Forever, and it says Family Forever for always, no matter what. And that is a sweet little sampler. Like that is so cute. And I've never seen that chart before. So that is really nice. Um, Sam Sarah Design Studio, and I actually have some of their minis, like their Mother Day minis, and I love them. I have never seen their bigger ones only because I think my store doesn't carry the bigger ones. They've carried the mini ones. Um, this is Yankee Doodle Doo. How sweet is that? Um, okay. She sent me some uh, Bent Creek um, Summer Snapper. And there's, there's a set of four, which how perfect is that? Um, the Whale House. That is so awesome. The Lighthouse. The Beach. And Bike Ride. So those are super, super sweet. Um, I think... Oh, and there's a frame that goes with it. So if you didn't want to stitch them for a cross-stitch board, there's, and I don't want to show the frame, um, but Bent Creek actually has a frame that you could purchase as well. So that is super cute. Um, this one is amazing, and I do not have this as much as I love Halloween. Amazing. Um, it is Glendolen Place. Uh, Grim glum and gloom on Halloween. I've never seen this one before. So that one is super cute. Love that. So thank you, Deb, for that. You really didn't need to do that, but I appreciate it. And I'm excited to kit some of those up. And um, thank you. So, okay. 
So the next thing I'm going to show you is some project bags. So if you guys follow me for any time, you know that my goal was to sew some project bags. And I sewed a project bag with a zipper. I used um, tutorial from Primitive Stitcher. I think Primitive Stitcher. I set it back in my floss tube that I showed the bag. Um, and she had a zipper one. And it was adorable and I sewed it and it was, it was, it was an all day process for one bag. Seriously. And it's not because her tutorial is not good. Her tutorial is fantastic. It is because I am a beginner sewer. So I am still learning. So sometimes I put stuff together and then I realize like I have clipped it together and I've clipped it wrong and then I need to reclip it. And, and so it's, Use your error, not the tutorial. So um, I have been talking with some of my friends and I think uh, Jennifer from, um, I always get her name wrong, Stitching in the Bluegrass, I think is her floss tube handle. It's Spunky Jen on Instagram and I always get uh, Stitching in the, it's something blue, Stitching in the Bluegrass I think is her on floss tube. Um, I watched both of them and I, but there's also somebody else that has bluegrass in their name that I'm friends with. And then I get the two of them confused, but it's Spunky Jen on Instagram. And then you can link to her floss tube. She, um, was making project bags, envelope project bags. So I hunted down a tutorial from Vana that did, um, envelope project bags. They have no zippers. Do you know how happy that makes me? No zippers. It's done with Velcro. So let me show you. This is one of the bags that I did and I'll show you up close of the pattern. How sweet are those sheep and tractors and just a little farm. This is pattern, this is fabric that I got from Joann's back during the summer in Florida. I hoard fabric, I find fabric, I, I normally buy a yard, anywhere from a half yard to two yards, depending upon what it is. And then I figure, eh, I'll figure out a project later on. So when I see something I like, I always try to grab it. This was part of that fabric. So it is an envelope. Um, this one is taller than it is wider. It's just the way when I cut the material. Her tutorial is very, very good. Vana Pfeiffer's tutorial is excellent. So sometimes when I cut it, it it's based on how much fabric I have, um, the placement sometimes, and I'll show you some bags where placement was important. Um, so a taller one is fine. I just ended up making it taller. No, no big deal. I like that. Um, I made my project bags a little bigger. I start out with a piece of fabric that is 18 or 19 inches wide, and then I cut it anywhere from 32 inches long to 33 inches long. Um, it can be less than that. It just depends on the cut of fabric that I have. It depends on the pattern. Um, and so I just kind of go with that. Um, so it's no hard, fast set size, which is great about these bags. So if you have a sliver of a piece and you're trying to use it up, you could probably use it. I have, I have definitely done that. Um, so the project bags have a Velcro enclosure. She tells you how to do all that. And then you have an inside fabric. So you need an outside fabric and inside fabric. That's it. Simple as that. You need some interfacing as well. She, um, Vana tells you which interfacing. I bought a bolt of it. I have plenty. When I cut my interfacing, I keep my scraps of interfacing and I will show you why. And also you can do ornaments with interfacing. So I keep my scraps. So anyhow, there's my project bag. I already have a project in there. This is one that I'm working on and I will show you at another time, which is Boer Birds and it is from um, hello by Liz Matthews. This is my bag that I've been using because I needed one. I was literally out of bags. So that's my first bag I used. I sewed. Um, this one is Tattooed Ladies. Now, what you will know is that when you make these bags, they are folded over. And so the back, if you have a pattern, will be upside down. It, it's just the way that the fabric is gonna be if you use a fabric that makes a difference on the front. Um, most of my fabric does have a pa does have patterns to it because that's why I buy it. Like I bought this because I just loved the pattern. Um, and then here's my inside pattern. 
some stripes that match. And as you can see, this is a good size bag. Um, this is a good size bag. I wanted mine wide, mainly because I like to put my pattern holder. I have two different sizes. This is the large one, and then there's a smaller one. But I wanted it to be able to fit the large one because sometimes I use the large one. Um, I wanted it to be able to fit that. I wanted it to be able to fit my Q-snap. And so that's why I made mine a little bit bigger. Um, but I love them. They're, they're so fantastic. And they're pretty quick to stitch up. Okay, so now we have Hermione. So if you're a Harry Potter fan, this fabric was found at Joann's as well. I actually went to a couple different Joann's like one of them was in Florida and I got some of it. And then at my local Joann's, I found some more. And then I went back a couple, like maybe two months later and they had the Hermione pattern that they did not have previously. So I got that. And this is the inside fabric is all of the um, houses in there. And it, this fabric actually coordinates with this. It also coordinates with this Harry Potter fabric, which is the um, tickets, the little heads and little tickets for the platform. And I used the same coordinating fabric because I had enough to do two bags with it. So I was able to use that. That was fun. Um, okay, so this was the first bag that I did. This is a bad example of a bag. And the reason being is that my fabric was, or the pattern was oriented horizontally. So it didn't quite work the way that I wanted it to. So I kind of had to piece it together. Let me show you the whole bag. This part, I actually was gonna do it differently and then I put a patch on it, on the front of it, the same as the inside fabric, but then it ended up being a little wider. So my back fabric, which is always upside down, shows a little bit on the front. So then I put a pom-pom on it so you can't really see, but I was able to use the trim. Um, this one was harder to do um, because I was limited on how much fabric I had. So the pattern, so I have some pieces that I've bought where the piece of fabric, the pattern goes like this way across the pattern and those I'm gonna need to piece like this one and hopefully I will do a better job piecing it than I did here. Um, this was a bad one to start with. So, and this is Sons of Anarchy fabric. So I don't know if you guys ever watched that show. I'm a huge fan, love it. So made a Sons of Anarchy bag. All right, I'll show you my next error. So I told you before, I'm a beginner sewer. So I love this pattern. Isn't that cute with the little cats, little skeleton cats, and it's bright and cheery. Yeah, that's the back of the bag. I sewed it upside down. The thing is, like, it's really cute because I have coordinating fabric. Okay, here's the problem. I switched it because I was like, oh no, I've got this upside down and I moved it and I moved it the wrong way. So I did it to myself. I second guessed what I did. So I have found out that when I pin it, I lay it on my table and I put it all, because technically your pattern piece that will go on the front flaps over and it has to be upside down, if that makes sense. Cause then it'll be right side on the, on the front. So what I have found is, is that I pin the sides and the top and then I leave the bottom open and then I always know that that's my top until I sew it and then I have it all the way sewn and then I can sew it together. Watch Vana's tutorial, that will make sense, but this one is upside down. Yes, I'm such an amateur. I'm not fixing it because like I, I seriously did not know it was upside down until I was taking pictures for Instagram and it was laying in the pile and I'm like, oh, that one's upside down, I, I got it not turned right. No, no, it was turned right. I sewed it wrong. So, it happens, we'll move on. 
This is why I don't mass produce bags for people because I sew them upside down. There you go. All right, so here's cats. Just fabric that I had and I loved the little retro dots. It's like an olive green color. So I just love that. Simple, cute. Okay, I'm going to show some in between here that I did as gifts. And I can tell you that I did them as gifts because my girlfriends don't watch my floss tube, I don't think. So I have talked before about how we do jugs gifts, just us girls. And they have to be homemade um, and we make them for each other every year. And then we get together and have dinner and we exchange gifts. And we're always very excited to do gifts. So this is part of their gift. I did mini bags. This is where I wanted to do them smaller, but I also had to look at the placement because of this fabric. So when I show this fabric, you will see why. It's country pinups. Is that not hysterical? But because it's so small, like I wanted to make sure I had his face on the bag. So I kind of adjusted the bag size for that. <laughs> so his crotch is right there, isn't that nice? Apparently I didn't look at that. So the back always upside down. So if you see the, you can see. Super cute. I used a check on the inside or a gingham. Um, so these can fit like, they could put their little, um, what I was thinking of like your ear pods, your cords, anything like that, that you would travel in your bag. I'm actually considering doing some, I like a little bit bigger to do an iPad and then they could put all of their iPads in there. But I really wanted to use this fabric. So this one is super cute. This is, um, most of the rest of them is this pattern. I think I've only done one of the cowboy one. Um, and it's like outdoor camping and hiking. Hello. The pattern kind of loses it on the back because it's so small. So I had to make sure that my placement was good on the front. Like I wanted to make sure his face was on the front and his torso. My girlfriends are going to crack up. Okay. So this one, I wanted to do him, which is he wearing like a onesie? Camping, that is hysterical, okay? Yeah, that's hysterical. So you can see his face when you open it up. Um, just the back is the camp pattern. Here's another one. This guy was very popular for me, which his chest and nipples are there. Isn't that nice? I'm that friend. And so you can see some of the other guys. Here's another hiker, because we all go hiking shirtless like that. And then there's the other guy on the back. So I just made those up really quick. Um, this is a bigger one, which actually would fit an iPad. So I might look at, I just was using scraps up here. And it's kind of funny because his legs kind of actually, that's like actually him. So, I kind of made him look like a midget. Like, like I cut off his legs. I, I did something weird. I don't, yeah, that's kind of weird. I, I don't know what I did there. So, there you go. That's the back. Here's one, another one of the cowboy ones that I made. Different pattern. But it has a truck. Does that count? It has a truck on it. Um, and I did red ticking on there. Um, this is another one. I actually, I think I used all of my fabric of this. So this is actually a regular size project bag. And that was, I was able to use all of my fabric. So I don't have any more but scraps of this. And then there would be the back side. So, and there I didn't cut him. He's normal size. Yeah, that kind of worked out weird. Oh, well. Okay. The other one I did was zombies. So if you like Walking Dead, this is, I don't know if it's technically called Walking Dead fabric, but it pretty much is. And then I used check on the inside. 
Buffalo check. Okay, last bag that I have made right now, and this is mermaid fabric. I'm trying to think. I don't think that this, it's just mermaid fabric. It's really sweet and pretty. The colors are really pretty. And I used pink check. As you can see, sometimes when I sew them, some of my other fabric will poke out. And, and that is a sewing error, but I actually like the way it looks. So I don't get too worked up about it because I actually like it. I'm trying to figure out how to put bag tags on these because they don't have any anywhere for me to put a tag. I did think about I could loop a tag through around here and make a large tag and just stick it off. And the only time I'd have to be cautious is when I had the bag open that my tag didn't fall all the way off. I've also thought about pinning a tag on here. I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. Um, so I don't know. I have a ton of fabric and I have like, I'm just enjoying sewing them. So I'm going to be sewing more. I am sure I will share more with you guys once I get them sewed. And I'm just using fabric that called to me, just fun fabric. So, okay. The last thing that I'm going to show you guys is um, kind of some stash. Uh, yeah, what I have in my stash, show, show the stash. So I organize all my cross stitch patterns in a filing cabinet and I put them in categories. So this is my beach category. So I thought I would show you beach since the summer is coming up and maybe you would be inspired or see a pattern that you like and you'd like to hunt down. Great time to support local shops or online shops, great time. Okay, so these were all a kit that I did and I don't remember, um, maybe it says on here. This was from Crazy Annie's Stitching um, and she did a floss bundle and fabric on most of them. I think I got all of it on each of these patterns and this is hands-on designs. This one is called Grab Life. And once again, I have the fabric and floss. I actually need to do these. This one is Surf Life. I do not have the um, floss for this one. Weird. Which is what I have found with Annie's clubs. So it's not always consistent on what I get, it seems like. It seems like sometimes I get the whole kit, sometimes I don't get the whole kit. I'm charged correctly, but it's not always, like this one has the floss, so I don't know why that one wouldn't have the floss. Little Cottage from Hands-On Designs. So that's just something if you sign up, you'll have to watch carefully to make sure that you get everything that you want. It's not a big deal. I can buy that floss. Totally not a big deal. This is O Whale. I have the floss fabric. This one does not have the floss. On Beach Time. Here is another one. This is really bulky, so I'm not sure why it's so bulky. Um, wondering, I'm wondering if this is the total floss for the whole thing. I don't know. I'm gonna have to sit down and look at all this because I never paid attention. Um, There might be two charts in each one too, now that I'm looking at it. Oh yeah, there is. So here is flock together and adjust your sales. So now I'm wondering if there's two in each. But this is a lot of floss. So I'm wondering, and it says floss bundle for the To The Beach series to complete the bundle. So this may be for the whole series. I'm gonna have a look at that. Okay, I think that's all of those that I have in here. Nope, there's one more. Well, actually two more. So each of those had different patterns in it. Learn your A, B, A, B, Zs and their um, row. So 
So there's a lot more of these than I realized. And that one doesn't have the floss. So now I'm wondering if it's not, let me look. If it's not, um, like maybe the floss came for every other one or something. Because I showed you that one. Here's another chart in here. Stars in the sky. I had no idea there was two charts in here. I don't remember when I bought these. I know it was a while ago. But hands-on designs, I feel like you can still get her patterns. Okay, this one has only one in here. Yeah, that only has one. And I haven't taken any of this stuff out, so that only has one chart. Maybe she shipped them differently. Maybe she shipped some of them together and I don't know. I don't know. This one has two. So this one is Refuse to Sink. Although I love um, this Surf Life one. Like that, I love that wagon. Love that. Um, this one has two in it as well. So anchor down. So those are all big projects. I need to, yeah. Okay, this is Plum Street Samplers Mariner's Drum. Um, there's not a great picture of the front part of it because that's a mermaid. And then there's the top of the drum. It's super cute, just not a great picture. And here's the bottom of the drum. So it's a really cute pattern, but not, the drums are hard to photograph. And I, I wish they would put a photograph of a long strip on it because they're really, really cute. You don't have to do them in a drum if you don't want to. You can just do them as a long stitch piece, which is what my plans was for this. You know, whenever I get to that. These are little cheap ones that I found in my craft store locally. And it's MG, MG, MCG Textiles, which is no longer in business anymore. And they're just little cheap ones. But they're cute little beach themes. Okay, this one is Ocean ABCs from design work crafts, and I am a huge fan of these. I have broken them up and stitched them before, just the simple pieces, not as a whole, and I love them. Like this beach one is one of my favorites. I would leave the number off and just stitch like the elements. They're so pretty. The colors are beautiful. It is a, a kit. Um, this is Sea Life from, let me take it out of there, Larnette. Oh, Leisure Arts. Okay. So let me take this out of the plastic so you can see it better. And just beachy themes. Really cute. I think I got that to do the motifs with um, and just kind of break them apart to do for my cross stitch boards. Um, okay, this is By the Bay Needle Art Lighthouse Samplers, and I'm not exactly sure why the picture is on the back, because it's supposed to be on the front, but I will show you the picture up close. Make sure you can see that in the frame. There you go. Really cute. These are not very big, um... Each square is 46 by 46. So it you can do these for a little cross stitch board or you can do them as a whole. I would do them as my cross stitch board. That's what I bought them for. Um, this is Mary Hickmont Designs Seaside Living and it's little seaside checks, which are really cute. And I think I was just gonna cut this pattern like to do for my cross stitch boards. Do them as individuals. This is Seaside Garden Sampler from Victoria Sampler. Um, yeah, 
just a cute one. I've actually never done a Victorian sampler. I know it has specialty stitches on it. Um, I've never done one. Oh, and this one has a thread pack, which is odd because I don't think I've ever bought one with a thread, thread pack. Huh. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever paid attention to that before. Um, okay, this is Seaside Silhouette by Imagining, Imaginating. And I was going to divide these up and do them very simple silhouettes. This is Designer Series Pair Lighthouses, and this is from Sudbury House. These are very pretty. Those are gorgeous. They are big. Um, I don't see a stitch count. Let me see here. They don't. Oh, stitch count is 88 by 88 and then 88 by 121. So not huge. Not huge. They're really pretty, though. The chart looks better. It, they do a good job blowing it up. This is Stitch and Inch by the Bay Needle Art Summer Pack 1. This is going to be extremely hard to see, but by the Bay Needle Art does a really good job with their colors. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that very well. Very, very cute. Very summery. And they're very small. They're, they don't take long at all. So I would divide those up. This is Country Cottage Needleworks, um, Fun in the Sun. And I was going to stitch these as individual for my cross stitch board as well. Those actually would take no time at all. You know, put it on the list. Put it on the list. Um, this is one that I printed out from my primitive needle art, wait a minute, um, punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine. I have the digital copy, so I did not print this in color, but it's, I believe in mermaids and that is from the primitive hair and I always love primitive hair. So I printed that out. Um, this is designer series C images from the Sudbury house again. Very cute little motifs. Okay, this is, I got this on clearance apparently. And I'm gonna try to find the name of the maker. Fairy wool in the wood. Mermaid Family, and it is by, their name is so small, Fairy Wool in the Wood. I, I think that's their name, Fairy Wool in the Wood, Mermaid Family is the name of the chart. I always like to try to tell the designer, and some of these designers are not ones that I know very well. That one I bought at my local um, needle workshop because I have the clearance sticker on there. Um, okay, these are from Hands on Designs from Squareology, Sandcastle Frame, Ahoy. This, is, oh, no, that was called Sandcastle Frame, sorry. This is Sail Around. Octopus Dance, which this one is adorable. I love that one. And this is uh, Ahoy Bit. Um, all right, these are postcards from the heart um, from Summer House Stitch Works. And this is beach that's the name of it so it's the sand castle it's kind of hard to tell on those this one is postcard stitch works it's called um voyage so it's right there 
This is um, Hinzent, oh, it's Hinzet, I don't know, Charmed Flip Flops. That's an old chart. Here's another one of those cheapies that I got at my scrap store. Very cute though. Look cute. This one is uh, Fishy Fishy, same company as the other one. Okay. Here is Froner Ritter Designs, and this is Sea Treasures. These are teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, I think they're 20 by 20. They are super cute though. Look at that little mermaid and the octopus, and there's a boat and a crab. It's really hard to see because they're so small. But they're really cute. I found that in Florida. Here's a book that I have, which is Nautical Designs to Stitch. And I'm trying to see if, okay, so these are the charts on the front, you can see. And then here are some more charts that are in the book on the back. And if you hear, look at that little otter. Isn't he cute? If you hear somebody snoring, it's actually my dog. Levi is sitting in my chair over there snoring. That's what he does. Here's Jardin Prevé. Um, I don't know what this is called because I can't read it, but I will show it so you can look. And it's like a village next to the sea. Um, this is Praiseworthy Stitches, and this is Beach Dreams. This is a better picture of it. So this is the front, and it's in a drum. Once again, I'm not going to do it in the drum. I'm going to do, it says, Dreaming of Sandcastle Waves, Starfish, Seahorses, and Conch Shells. And there's actually what the pattern looks like. Isn't that sweet? I love that. But I wouldn't do it in a drum. But I like that they gave you the whole pattern picture back here because you can't, you don't get that detail from there. Okay, this is one that I got off of Etsy Goth Crafts. Um, Karen Kreftor, Kreftor? I'm not sure how you say her name, but it is the Kraken. Let's see if you can see it. Let me take it out of the plastic, hold on. Because it's a really good design. It's very hard to see. There's the top up here. So cute. And that one's not very big either, I don't think. Um, 130 by 130. Not bad. Um, this was one that I got. It's a free chart that is wash your hands. And it's recently been out. So I can show you the free chart. Let me see who it's from. Amy Funny XX. Annie Funny XX. And she put this out as a free chart and it's wash your hands. I like that. So I printed that up. That was in a Facebook group that I found that off of. This one I showed you last time, Island Sisters from Carriage House Samplings. Um, this one is Singing Mermaid. I also showed this last time. I'm gonna show you the up close of the designer's name because I can't say it, but I think you can still find this relatively easy. Can you see that? And here it is. And it's a sweet little sampler. So, all right. This is Cricut Collection, the Cross-Eyed Cricut. Beachy Mood. So it just says beach and the letters, they're typical little letters that have everything on it. It's really hard to see because their colors blend in on that picture, but it's a cute pattern. Okay, and this one is Mermaid Frank Turd, and this is Plum Street Samplers, and that is just cute. Love that. 
that is 145 by 108. So that's not, that's not huge. Really sweet and cute. Okay, so those were some beach themes. Those were some project bags. Those were spring stitching. And I am still stitching, so I will have more to share on the next floss tube that coming up. And I talked for 55 minutes. So there you go. I hope everybody stays safe. Happy stitching. Um, and, you know, we'll be back next time. Thanks so much.